After learning all the rocket jumping techniques to the proficiency expected in the other medium courses, Medium Mix challenges you to put them together in new ways. Being able to tackle this course is a good indicator that you're well-rounded and capable of several interesting jump maps. Jump 1 is a crouch bounce into a skip, with some interesting strafing at the start and end of the jump. Jump off to set up the crouch bounce, and then strafe to turn around. Bounce, then skip, aiming straight down for both rockets. Then you need to figure out how to strafe to the end platform. Start your turn just as you cross the end of the platform because that way you'll be facing inwards at the end of the strafe. Jump 2 is a pretty simple jerf jump, but it actually teaches you something interesting about jerf that you might not have learned by now. The first ramp is pretty standard, just shoot along the ramp to gain speed. On the second ramp, however, you don't actually want to hold A to go towards the ramp the entire time. Once you get enough speed, you're going to be thrown up the ramp because the curve is so sharp. To avoid this, hold D to strafe with the turn instead of holding A towards the ramp. By choosing this method, you avoid getting a whole bunch of unwanted vertical speed and flinging off the top of the ramp. Once you're done with your jerf, strafe around the obstacle and to the end of the jump. On jump 3, not only do you need to do some wall shots to cross a gap, you need to catch on the wall and climb it. When you're crossing a gap that ends in a wall catch, you want to balance your horizontal and vertical speed. The more horizontal speed you have, the faster you get to the wall, but once you get to the wall, your remaining vertical speed will determine how easy it is to do the wall catch. You'll probably want to go for height up until the last wall shot, which you can use to get speed to cross the gap faster and rely on the vertical speed from the earlier walls to carry you over. Pre-fire the wall as early as you're comfortable with, and aim a little under where you think you'll crash into it. Jump 4 features some skips while moving downwards pretty quickly. Try to go fairly low out of the wall shot so that you can catch yourself with the skips and gain speed without falling out of control. During these skip rockets, you may want to shoot a little early while you're still falling. That way, the rocket explodes and lifts you in time with your arrival. After the skips, just complete the strafe and you're done with the jump. Jump 5 starts with the sink, then a couple of wall shots, then a jerf. The longer you wait to do your wall shots, the slower you'll be rising and the harder it will be to make them work. On top of going early, you also want to aim very aggressively. You're rising super fast from the sink, and it's possible that you aren't used to doing wall shots while rising up so quickly. If you use the same aim that you do for slower wall shots, you won't get nearly as much power out of them, which not only might cost you the jump on some attempts, but will also lose you the opportunity to learn how to do better wall shots when rising quickly. After the walls comes the jerf. Ultimately, you need to maximize the speed and distance that you get off of the last ramp to clear the final, larger gap. The ramps can take about three shots if you're going slowly, and two if you're going quickly. Budget your rockets efficiently so you can get a good trajectory off the ends of the ramps and make it over to the end. Jump 6 starts off with a bounce setup. Walk off, then shoot the ground while keeping crouch released. All the walls here can be shot, though likely you'll prefer to use the platforms most of the way and pogo it. At the end of the skips, you'll need to transition to wall shots because the platforms run out. Try to keep some speed into the wall shots so that they're easier to do. Aim catching rockets so that you keep your speed but slow your fall to maximize distance. Jump 7 had me stuck for a good while. After some wall shots to make it into the V, you need to gain as much speed as possible to fly off the ramp and make it all the way to the end. Once you get the walls down and you can get to the jerf part pretty frequently, your major concern will become how you're going to manage to get as much speed as possible. There's several approaches, some work better than others, and some will be more or less effective depending on the person doing the jump and how they do their wall shots. I'll offer a couple of ideas. First, you can go for raw speed into the ramp already, and then try to keep getting as much speed as possible with individual rockets. This method works well if you're already able to go fast and low into the ramp from the wall shots. The other method I'd like to share is doing a jerf sink as you enter the V. This way is effective if you're pretty slow with the wall shots, but get some good height off of them. No matter how you got fast into the final ramp, the last shot is the same. While you're sliding up that ramp, you're losing speed, but you're gaining distance and height. 
The longer you wait on that ramp, at least in most cases, the further you'll end up being able to go. So try to shoot your rocket at the very top of the ramp to maximize the distance that you can cover at your current speed. As for the aim on that rocket, if you aim higher, you get more height but less speed, and lower and you'll get more speed but less height. It turns out that because you're getting plenty of height already just from sliding up a ramp, aiming straight down will help a lot with getting as far as possible. Jump 8 prevents a lot of people from being able to beat this course. I had to save here for a good while too. The skips are pretty difficult on their own. You have to get good height into them and be able to chain them together. Too low and you'll either bonk or go too high for the next skip, but too high and you'll either miss or go too low for the next skip. When you're flying in for the sink, you have a couple of options. The quote unquote normal way to do this jump is to pre-fire one rocket, then sink with it, strafe over the barrier, and do a triple. The alternate way is to pre-fire two rockets right away, and then triple over the whole thing. Doing a triple early like this is pretty reliant upon luck at this skill level though, so even if your skill set and the speeds that you get off the skip lend themselves to this strategy, I highly suggest that you come back and prove that you can learn to do it with a double into a triple as well. Regardless of how many pre-fires you're doing, it's beneficial to look back at the rockets that you've already shot when you're falling this far. Getting used to looking back to line up position and timing is a useful skill that will be required time and time again in all sorts of different jumps. Once you get over the first platform, you get a shot at the triple, or if you already did a triple over the platform, you might just be able to go all the way over. Jump 9 is a long pogo that ends with a wall and an overhang to go under. You start by going up the slope. You can go very slowly using WASD to inch forwards and correct your positioning, but at this point you should learn to use strafing and be conscious of how high off the ground you are to pogo faster. Once you get to the top, you need to climb up a wall and then transition over the ground at the other side of that indicator. If you're climbing up the wall really fast from the speed that you had from the slope, you might need to slow down at the top of the wall climb. Once you're at the top, you need to start getting speed. If you don't, then when you go to the wall you'll have some really awkward wall shots that won't likely get you the distance that you need. If you're going somewhat fast instead, one or two rockets off that wall can get you the speed you need to dip under the overhang and finish the jump. It's likely that you'll be going a bit too fast so you'll crash into that overhang. In this case just strafe out and then back in to keep your speed but delay your entry into the cubby at the end. Most of the difficulty on jump 10 is derived from the left walls that you need to do early on, but depending on your experience with Jerf, you may not be comfortable with what to do next. Let's start by focusing on the walls a bit. You're likely significantly less skilled with left walls than right walls, but since you already know how to do right walls, you can use that knowledge to test against what you're doing on the left. Most players new to left walls will over strafe to the left because they're uncomfortable and want to make sure that they get back. It's important that you fight that urge and strafe as little as possible so that you keep your speed. You'll do worse at first. After all, if you ever strafe too little, that's it. You're off the wall. But if you practice this way, you'll pick up correct left walls technique faster and be able to readily make it to the next part of the jump. For the jerf ramp to be effective, you need to fall gently into it and allow it to gradually catch you and launch you out. If you try to land further down on the ramp to keep some of your speed, you'll end up losing a ton of it instead. Don't shoot any rockets at the top. They'll either knock you off the wall or send you too fast for the ramp to send you outwards later, probably both. Instead, just slide right down it. After one rocket at the bottom of this ramp and one more rocket on the last ramp, you have to strafe in a circle. There's little to say about the strafe. Be careful to give yourself room to start turning before you reach a corner. See how I'm on the outside so I can start turning left way before I actually pass the corner that I'm going around. If you don't make it far enough, it could be the strafe, or it could be that you just didn't have enough speed going into it. Good luck with tackling Media Mixed. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.